you're studying for a personal training certification exam and feeling a bit overwhelmed. Let me give you three tips to pass any exam. Welcome to this video on three tips to pass any personal training certification exam. My name is Tyler Valencia. I've been in the fitness industry for about 17 years and I've worked for two of the larger fitness education companies, NCCPT and Nesta. And when I used to work for them, I used to give advice, tips for customers just like you that are calling in, hoping to get that insight as their exam approaches. So I'm gonna give you three tips that hopefully help you be more efficient with your time and utilize things that hopefully you're doing already in your own health and fitness routine. Before we jump into it, you might be thinking, how can I give you three tips to pass any certification exam? Because you might be thinking, oh, this one is by this company and I'm studying for this company. Yes, that is true. Different personal training companies have different education, but in theory and with the accreditation that they apply for, you should be able to take the program and be able to take any exam. It's all based on becoming an entry level personal trainer. So getting somebody ready for that first day of work. So I always put quotes around it because there are some little quirks about it that I'm going to go over in this video, but Stay tuned because it's more about the study tips that I'm going to give you that hopefully helps you pass. The first tip that I have for you, and hopefully you've heard this one already, and that is to connect the anatomical terms, the energy systems, and also the movements to things that you already do at the gym. If you are a health or a fitness enthusiast already, you're most likely going to the gym. You're exercising. You're doing exercises that you're going to be tested on. So while you're performing them, what are the primary movers? What are the muscle groups being moved? What type of muscle actions are happening at each joint? By doing this, what you're doing, is you're connecting things that you already like. You're not thinking of in terms of, oh, this term, what's an eccentric, what, what's an eccentric contraction? What is the latissimus dorsi? You're not thinking about those things in terms of foreign objects. You're connecting them to things that you already do things you like. So hopefully you have that positive association with them and you're ready to come to it. When you come to it on the exam, you're thinking, oh, wow, I already know this one. I'm going to break it down because I have gone through it each time I've gone to the gym and you're creating those repetitions because pretty soon you're going to be using them with your clients. Tip number two, and this is almost a continuation of the previous one, but that is it now practice saying them out loud. What you're trying to do, you're trying to create that connection between your mind and your mouth. So that it sounds normal when you're talking about flexion, when you're talking about eccentric movements, you're talking about different muscle groups, energy systems, all those things sound normal coming out of your mouth. You want it to feel like it's the back of your hand and that you've been saying these terms, you know what the joint actions are, you know all these things, that you've been saying them for years. So now practice saying them out loud. Tip number three, and with this one, you want to figure out the nuances of each company's personal training model. What is that? If you're looking at the program manual or you're looking online, most likely you're going to see some letters, some acronym that stands for their personal training model. It, what in theory that is, is once you get on the job, you're working with your clients, it gives you a model to instruct, to assess, to design, and to be able to apply this in a manner that you remember it and that it's functional within your own work environment. Now, in theory, you should be able to take, I did say something, you should be able to take the programming, the education from one company and apply it to another. But this is the gray area that we live in with fitness education and certifications. And it's gray because with each of them, there's different terms, there's different letters associated with them. So learn the nuances of each of them because they will definitely come up on your exam. As I wrap this video up, I do want to quickly talk about the language of our industry. When you are taking your exam, you're learning all these terms, you're learning anatomical terms, joint movements, you're learning energy system, biomechanics, you're learning so much information that it is important to our industry and becoming a personal trainer or a group exercise instructor. But when you work with clients, you are going to be using basic terminology. You're most likely never going to say, I want you to perform flexion. I want you to do extension maybe extension, because that is a pretty basic term, but you're going to be using things that are more basic, easy to digest for them, because that's not how you talk with clients. 
You want them to be able to understand it. You're going to show them in different ways. You're going to say things in different ways because they are learning movements, exercises for the first time. And you do not want to be talking over their head because most likely they'll just go to a different trainer. They'll go to a different class. So realize that this is important. These terms are important. Learning this education is important because it does help you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps you with studying for your personal training certification exam. I love to know if you come back, you pass, what helped you, what tips help you, because it's all about helping other fitness pros, other instructors getting into the industry and hopefully helping them during that stressful process, which is the certification exam. I'll catch you in the next one.